Hello students, welcome to FS Cloud. My name is Shashmita. We have an app by the name Careers Cloud, which you can go and download through the Play Store. Once you have downloaded the application, you will be easily be able to log in using your Gmail ID. And once you have logged in, you will be redirected to this page where you will be getting this UI. And there will be option for Home, All Courses, My Courses and Browse section in this application. You will be getting multiple PDFs, multiple content on a daily basis that will be enhancing your learning. Under Crack Current Affairs, you will be able to see multiple options. First one is Current Affairs English. We upload the day-to-day -day basis uh, news in the English format. And apart from English PDF, we also provide them in Hindi format. And this Banking Awareness, we upload a PDF every month. So this PDF will contain the banking news, banking and the finance news of that respective month. And Current Affairs Exam PDF will have two categories. One is that most important news of that particular month will be uploaded in this Current Affairs Exam PDF. And also Exam Perspective PDF will also be uploaded. If and next is special CA. This will contain union budget, economic survey, and also the most important events that had taken place globally as well as nationally. And next most important is topic wise. So the entire news of that particular month will be segregated into different topics. And in order to recollect whatever you've read, we also provide you with topic wise quizzes. Apart from that, we also provide state current affairs. Now, uh, here if you see, we provide you with the day-to-day -day PDF and this we provide you with the weekly PDF. So that particular week news will be compiled into a PDF and in question and answer format in English and will be uploaded here. And to enhance your learning, you can also, to enhance and strengthen your learning, you can also attend the quiz. Here we provide you with the entire news of that particular week. But here we take the top 60 most important news and we upload it in this PDF in question and answer format. Apart from weekly, we also provide you the monthly ones. This PDF will contain detailed view of that particular month news. And this will have a brief format of the same news. This will have in the this will be in the form of a question and answer set, uh, format, and this will have the top hundred question and answer of that particular month. We also provide you with the PID news on a day-to-day -day basis, which you can go and read in these particular tabs. Apart from that, we also provide the union budget and economic survey. You can also attend the you can read after reading the PDF. You can also go and attend the quiz. This is available in the special CA category. We also provide state level current affairs. So this will be a very helpful for students who are preparing for state level exams. For example, if you are preparing for Tamil Nadu state level exams, then you can click this tab and you will be able to see all the current affairs or news related to Tamil Nadu. Apart from that, we also provide PDF from the exam perspective. Suppose you are preparing for RBI assistant mains, then this tab will contain five to six months of current affairs, which has high probability of being asked in RBI assistant mains. Similarly for SBI PO, RRB PO, clerk mains, all these are being given under this section. And also we provide separate Content-wise, topic-wise, current affairs like national affairs, government schemes, international affairs, banking and finance, economy and businesses, MOUs and committees and meetings, all these different types of uses are segregated in these particular categories. Hello students, welcome to our new initiative. In this initiative, we will be uploading the weekly current affairs on banking and finance section. So this will be uploaded on every Monday. And so on the whole, per month, you will have totally four videos related to this topic. And apart from just providing you with the banking and finance news, we also provide you the conceptual explanation so that this will enhance and also strengthen your knowledge about these topics. Today, we will be covering the April 2nd week banking and finance news. Moving to the first news. The first news is RBI delays the currency derivative regulations to curb speculative trading to May 3, 2024. Now, on April 4, to, uh, April 4, 2024, the Reserve Bank of India has deferred the implementation of exchange traded currency derivative regulations by a month to May 3, 2024 to curb speculative trading. Now, before understanding this news, we have to understand what is ETCD. For that, consider this example. That is an exporter. He manufactures and exports mobile phones. Now, he has got, he has received a purchase order for 100 mobile phones, which is worth $10,000. Now, the purchaser has told the exporter that, let it, let it be A. Okay. Now, the purchaser has told the exporter that after two months, you have to export me this 100 mobile units, mobile phones, and I will give you $10,000 in return. And this was the uh, purchase order or the invoice order. Now, now, in the market, $1 was trading at 80 rupees. The exporter fears that what after 2 months, $1 goes down to 70. Then, if it was 80, he would be getting 8 lakhs. If it goes down to 70, then he would be getting only 7 lakhs. So, that would be a loss of 1 lakh. So, 
he gets worried. Now, similarly, you have another case, an opposite scenario. Here, importer, he gives an order of say again 100 mobile phones from a manufacturer outside India. And he also tells that you have to deliver me after two months and the, let, let the value of the order be similar to the same to, as to this export one. So let it be $10,000. After two months, you uh, give me this, he tells to the manufacturer that you export this 100 mobile phones to me, I will pay you $10,000. Now, this importer knows that now $1 is 80 rupees. Now he's thinking, what if this $1 becomes 90 in the future? In that case, I have to pay 1 lakh more, which means 9 lakhs rather than 8 lakhs. Now, it is just opposite scenario. So, what they do is, let this be B. Now, this A and B, they get into a contract. So, A tells that after 2 months, I will get $10,000. I will give it to you at 80 rupees per dollar. And B, important, he, uh, he or she also agrees. Because he or she worries that it, the dollar price might increase to 90. In, this, in that case, he is getting at 80. And A was worried that it might go down to 70. But he would be getting it at 80. So after 2 months, what happens is that A gives this $10 to B. That he has received from the purchaser abroad. Now, A will get 8 lakhs. B would have given 8 lakhs to A and A would have in turn given $10,000 to B and this importer would give $10,000 to this manufacturer. So this is what is an exchange traded currency derivative and you buy this exchange traded currency derivative through an authorized dealer, AD. So AD provides you this ETCD. Now what is this news about? So according to RBI, you can get into this ETCD only if you have an underlying exposure. See, for this case, ex, uh, for an exporter, he is trying to save his loss. He is trying to reduce his loss. He don't, so that is the exposure. So he has an export order. Similarly, an importer, he has also an import order. So this is the underlying exposure. So how is the scenario in the market now? It is that initially the participants were allowed to take positions up to 10 million per exchange. So you know there are two exchanges in India that is National Stock Exchange, Bombay Stock Exchange. So if this exporter, in both exchanges he can have only 10 million. I mean sorry, uh, 10 million per exchange. So together, altogether it was 10 million. But later it was subsequently amended and now it stands at 100 million. So previously it was 10 million per exchange. So if it was two exchanges then you can have 20 million. That was how it was. But later it got amended that across all exchanges, the exposure that A can have is only 100 million, including all the currency. See, if exporter A, he exports even to US, Euro uh, and then UK, then he will have various other contracts like INR and US, INR and uh, Euro, INR and Pound. So these many contracts will be there. Together added, it has to be 100 million if you don't have to provide the documentary evidence. I'll come back to the documentary evidence part later. So just get this point now that previously it was 10 million per exchange and now and later on uh, it got, uh, not now, but later on it got uh, updated to 100 million. So 100 million combined all exchanges it is. Now what is this documentary evidence? See, exporter when he gets an order for 100 mobile phones, then he would have either a purchase order or an invoice. So this is the documentary evidence. This purchase order or invoice, it will have the number of units to be produced, the amount of the uh, purchase order and also the timeline like by this month, by this date, that is suppose today is uh, uh, say it is April 15. So you have to pay within April, uh, maybe June. So by June, you have to pay this $10,000 or you will receive this $10,000. So this, all these details will be there in the purchase order. So you have to have, without having to produce the documentary evidence to establish the underlying exposure, but did not provide any exemption from the requirement of having the exposure. So up to 100 million, you don't have to provide the evidence, but it is a must that you have to have the exposure. 
It's just, just that you don't have to provide the evidence to the authorized dealer. This is the only difference. If it is above 100 million, then you have to provide the evidence to the authorized dealer. That is what. This is the two difference between below 100 million and above 100 million. Now, RBI has reiterated the regulatory framework for participation in ETCDs involving the INR without any change. So, there is no change in the circular. It has only reiterated. Now, why is the RBI reiterating now? It is because it has observed a lot of volatility of Indian rupee in the market. And the main reason was because a lot of people who bought this ETCD were mainly speculators. Now, what are these speculators? There is another thing called hedgers. Now, who are these hedgers? Now, speculators or hedgers are the one who has an underlying exposure and who is trying to reduce the loss or due to the uncertainty of the movement of the rupee. Here, speculators, they do not have any underlying exposure. They are neither exporters nor importers. They don't have any purchase order or invoice. They just want to make utilization of the volatility of the money. Suppose today the dollar is 80 rupees and after 10 days it goes to 82. So, this 2 rupees, they just want to take this advantage of 2 rupees and gain money from it. So, speculators are the ones who doesn't have a valid exposure, underlying exposure and who is trying to just get advantage of this volatility of the money. And due to these speculators, there was a huge volatility of the money and the money also a little bit depreciated. So, RBA has observed this in the market and that is why it has reiterated the regulatory framework. So, as it heard though, participants with a valid underlying uh, contracted exposure can continue to enter into ETCD involving the INR up to a limit of 100 million without having to produce documentary evidence of the underlying exposure. It is emphasized that the regulatory framework for ETCDs has remained constant over the years and there is no change in the RBI's policy approach. See, there is no change. It has only reiterated. It has told the participants that you have to ensure that you have this evidence. And if needed, if the authorized dealer, if they ask for the evidence, then they should be able to produce them. This is what is the news about. Okay. So, the next news is highlights of RBI's first bi-monthly monetary policy of financial year 25. So, the new financial year has started and the first monetary policy committee by the RBI was conducted. It was conducted on April 3 to 5, 2024 and it has released the monetary policy statement 2024-25 resolution of the MPC. So, in that, it has kept the India's GDP growth at 7% for financial year 25 and for quarter 1 it is 7.1, quarter 2 it is 6.9 and quarter 3 and 4 it is 7%. Now, the stance is to focus on withdrawal of accommodation. Now, what is accommodation stance? When the money supply is more in the economy, when you want to induce money supply in the economy, when you want the um, citizens of the India to spend more money, to make more conception, to increase their conception, then in that case, you induce money, you increase the money supply in the um, country. So, how do you increase the money supply? By reducing the interest rate. So, that is called less accommodation. Now, withdrawal of accommodation is a, is a situation where you reduce the money supply in the economy because the inflation is high. So, in order to reduce the or control the inflation, the withdrawal of accommodation stance has been chosen. Now, currently what are the policy, various policy rates? One, repo rate is 6.5, fixed reverse repo rate is 3.35, SDF is 6.25, MSF is 6.75, bank rate 6.75, CRR 4.5 and SLR is 18%. Now, if you see, this is the repo rate. And this is the SDF and this is MSF. So, 6.5, 6.25 and 6.75. So, SDF and MSF rates are always linked to the repo rate. So, this will always be minus 2.5 and this will always be 0.25 more than the repo rate. Now, so, RBI has kept the repo rate unchanged at 6.5 for 7th consecutive time. So, for consecutive 7 meetings, the RBI has kept the repo rate at 6.5. Why? Because it wants to reduce the inflation. 
Now, what is inflation? Inflation is nothing but a gradual increase of prices of goods and services in the country. So, suppose if I buy one milk packet today at 30 rupees and one year back it was 28, then what is the inflation rate? It is around 7%. So, the price of the packet is now 7% more. So, this is what is called inflation. Now, RBI has set an objective of achieving the inflation target at 4% with a bandwidth of plus or minus 2%. So, it is 2% to 6% is the bandwidth. Now, how is this inflation measured? It is measured in two ways. One is WPI that is wholesale price index. Another is CPI that is consumer price index. Now, the RBI uses CPI to set the inflation target. Now, what is WPI? What is CPI? CPI is from the consumer perspective index and WPI is from the producer or the manufacturer perspective index. So, WPI will tell how much money is required now to produce certain product compared to how much money was required to produce it one year back. Similarly, CPI will tell you how much money is required now to buy that product from the market for the customer usage compared to how it was previously. So, this is the main difference between WPI and CPI. So, there is something called CPI code. Now, if from CPI, if you minus food and fuel, then you will get CPI core. Now, why is that something called CPI core is there? Now, food and fuel are highly volatile products. Now, food is completely dependent upon the monsoon, which is a natural process and not in our hands. So, it's completely volatile. Similarly, fuel. We import major of our fuel need. So, it is imported from Middle East, Arab countries and all. So, sometimes the Middle East countries, they reduce the production or they fix a certain production. And also due to like if you see the Red Sea crisis, all this uh, pathway and all are affected. So the fuel uh, prices are not in our hands. These are external factors. So fuel products are also highly volatile. So we calculate this CPI core by minusing or by subtracting this food and fuel. And for February 2024, it has dropped to 3.4%. Now, marking one of the lowest points in the current CPI series. Now. So, what is the CPI inflation targets set by the RBI? For financial 25, it is 4.5. For quarter 1, 4.9. Quarter 2 is 3.8. Three, quarter 3 is 4.6. And quarter 4 is 4.5. Now, these are the products that are there in CPI. So, what are the items that are there in CPI? Food and beverage, housing, fuel and light, clothing and footwear, pan, tobacco, intoxicants and miscellaneous and these numbers are the weightage given to each and every item. Next, domestic and global economy. The real GDP, it has expanded by 7.6% financial year 24 as per the second advance estimates by National Statistical Office which works under the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. In its first advance estimate, it had estimated that the uh, country would grow at 7.3% for financial year 24 and now it has increased its estimation to 7.6% which is a very good uh, number. Next, the gross value added would uh, rose by 6.9% financial year 24. Now, what is the connection between GDP and GVA? GDP is the final price of all the goods and services that are bought by the customers. So, GDP is from the consumer perspective and GVA is from the supplier perspective. So, GDP will tell how much money a consumer has to pay in order to buy that product. But GVA will tell how much will the supplier get by selling his product. So, how much will the supplier get? Uh, so, his, the supplier, if you see, will not get the entire money that the customer uh, gives to him. The indirect taxes will be subtracted because that will go to the government and the subsidies will be added. So if you see in order to incentivize certain sectors, government provides the subsidies. For example, recently you would have seen in news that for the EV sector, for EV manufacturing, uh, government would uh, prov uh, provide subsidy around 10,000 to 15,000. So this subsidy will go to the supplier. And the taxes that the customer gives to the supplier will go to the um, government. So, you this is the formula to calculate GDP. GDP is equal to GVA plus
plus the indirect taxes minus the subsidies. Now, with respect to global economy, if you see, there would be steady growth in 2004-2024 despite declining inflation. And the main reason is because service prices is, uh, is kept relatively high. Now, India's forex reserves. We know that RBI, that is the Reserve Bank of India, manages the forex reserves of India. Now, it has hit an all-time high of 645.58 billion, that is as on March 29, 2004. This has increased by USD 2.95 million. And the main contribution was from foreign currency assets. So, foreign currency assets includes dollar, pound, euro. So, all these comes under this foreign currency assets. Now, RBI to enable cash deposit facility via UPI. If you visit a branch and if there is an ATM counter in front of it, you might see two machines. Now, in all branches, you have two machines, but there are more branches having two machines. One is ATM, another is CDM. You know that from ATM, you can only withdraw money. From, but from CDM, that is cash deposit machine, you can also deposit money. So, if you see, notably, banks' cash deposit machine improve the customer convenience. Especially for small merchants, they don't have to wait in the queue and go and deposit in the branch. They can directly come and deposit in the CDM machine. So, this will also help the branches as it has the ease of cash handling burden will reduce. So, it's a win-win situation both for the branch as well as for the customers. Now, Previously or until now, if you wanted to deposit cash into your account, then you will do it via a debit card. So you will have to uh, enter the debit card, the, uh, swipe in the debit card, you have to enter the PIN and then you can deposit the money. But now RBI has proposed or has thought of considering the UPI. You know that UPI is popular not just in India but all over the world. So why not use UPI to deposit the cash in CDM mission? This is what RBI has proposed in this NPC meeting. So currently, cash deposits require debit cards, but considering UPI's popularity and success in cardless cash withdrawals, this proposal has been made. Next, other proposals. With a view to facilitate wider non-resident participation in SGB, a scheme for investment and trading in these bonds is available at IFSC, which is in Gujarat. So what is sovereign green bonds? It is nothing but these are the bonds issued by the country. Now, whatever receive, whatever recipients, whatever money is received via this bond, mostly they all the money will go into creation of green infrastructure or renewable energy sectors. So this is the uh, this is the purpose of this green bonds. So it is one of the measures used by the country in order to head towards the net zero carbon emission. So this year, if you had seen recently last month, I guess it was released that. Uh, in the first half of this financial year, the government has planned to raise 12,000 crore via the sovereign green bonds. So, until now, how do the NRA invest in sovereign green bonds? If you see, the FPIs registered with the SEBI, they invest in sovereign green bonds and the various routes. Now, suppose an NRA wants to invest in sovereign green bond, which is issued in India. Now, how will we he invest? He will register himself with the FPI. And the FPI will be registered with SEBI. See, the NRA has the money that it wants to invest in the sovereign green bond. It will register with itself with the FPI. So it will provide the money to the FPI. FPI in turn will invest in the sovereign green bond. So this is how it, it is working till now. Now, in order to increase the liquidity of the sovereign green bonds, what has RBI proposed that? It will now allow the non-residents to participate in the IFSC, International Financial Service Centre, which is located in Gandhi Nagar. So the NRI can participate in sovereign green bonds. That is a scheme for investment and trading in this bonds is now available in the IFSC. Now, the next one is RBI would launch a mobile app for accessing the retail direct portal. This RBI retail direct scheme was launched in November 2021. Now, what is this RBI retail direct scheme? We know that the banks and corporates, they all invest in government securities. So similarly, this was a mode for, to allow the citizens of the country to invest in the government securities. For that, you need an account called GILT account. So currently, until up to now, you have a website called rbaretaildirect.org.in. 
so you have to go create your provide your details and create an account there so it will give you have a guilt account there just like how for in order to buy equities you have to have a dmat account similarly in order to purchase government security you have to maintain a guilt account with the rbi so th through this rbi retail direct website you can go and create a guilt account and buy the government securities from the rbi so in order to make it even more convenient rbi has planned to launch a rbi retail direct uh, rbi retail direct app just like how you can go and create buy or sell securities in this website portal now you will be able to do it in the app once it is launched so this scheme actually enables the investors to buy securities in the primary auction that is when they are issued for the first time you can go and buy the securities as well as you can buy the sell securities that are already in being existing in this scenario in this market so it is done through this platform which is called as negotiated dealing system order matching platform next now rbi has decided to allow small finance banks to use permissible rupee interest derivative products and at present small finance bank are permitted to use only interest rate futures now we just read it in the previous slides that futures they are all used in order to reduce the uncertainties similarly most we you know we just read it in the previous slide that banks invest in government securities and the interest rates in the government securities fluctuates and these government securities are mostly for long duration so in order to protect themselves from this fluctuation or any loss they get into this interest rate futures so this is how uh, they maintain their balance sheets so that they can maximize the profit now under interest what is this in rupee interest derivative product under rupee interest derivative product you have many other products like interest rate future is one of it that the small finance banks is already accessing another is interest rate swap another is interest rate option so these many options are there these many products are there under this derivative product so previously small finance bank was allowed to use only this interest rate future now rbi has decided to allow the small finance bank to use the other by products also that are available in the rupee interest derivative product so this will allow further flexibility to the small finance bank for hedging their interest rate risk and enhance their resilience now next rbi has proposed to broaden the cbdc retail access so central bank digital currency this is nothing but a digital legal tender which is issued by the reserve bank of india we know that in november 2022 the cbdc pilot version of whole sail was uh, established and december 2022 there was a pilot version of retail cbdc in december so all these versions are even in currently only banks were allowed to issue the cbdc wallets so now in order to enhance its presence in order to more provide it to many more people now rbi has proposed to allow the non bank payment operators to also offer the cbdc wallets so it will facilitate resilience testing for multi channel transactions now currently upi payment from pppi require use uh, using the issuer's web or mobile app see what is ppi prepaid payment instruments these are instruments that are issued by bank or non banks can also issue them so here we preload the money suppose you say kindly uh, there is an instrument and you tell them that's issued by the bank and you tell them to load some 2000 rupees so this instrument will have preloaded money and you can use that money only up to the amount that is available in this instrument so only up to 2000 you can use it so in order to access this ppi till now what we do is that suppose this bank is issuing this ppi you in order to access the ppi you have to go log in this bank's app only via the bank's app you can go and access this ppi and make payments to the merchants or to any person now rbi is telling that why only through app you can you should also allow it to third party so that it will be convenient for the customers so third party like gp is saying that even via gp you should be able to use the ppi so how do how are we actually using gp now so you download the app and then you provide the bank account details like you provide the uh, ifsc code the bank account number all these bank account details are provided and then a virtual id is created this is how you use a gp 
Similarly, we should be able to upload the PPI information in the GPA. You have to be able to load the PPI information in the GPA and then via GPA you can use the PPI so that you don't need to have an extra app just to access this PPI. So this is what RBI has proposed in this MPC meeting. The UPI payment from the PPI requires using the issuer's web or mobile app. It is proposed to allow a third party UPI apps for these payments aiming to boost convenience and encourage more digital transactions for small amounts. Now, liquidity coverage ratio. We know that under Basel 3, two ratios were introduced. One was liquidity cover ratio and other was net stable funding ratio. This was for long term basis. And this was for short term. Concentrate on the short term funding. So what is LCR? LCR is nothing but you have to maintain, it is a framework where you have to maintain a high quality liquidity assets to cover the expected net cash flow in the next 30 days. Suppose uh, in the next 30 days, a bank is expecting that it will have a net cash flow of 50 crores. Then it should have 50 crores as its high quality liquidity assets. Now what is this high quality liquid assets? These are nothing but which can be easily and immediately be converted into cash so that you can serve the uh, outflows. So this is what is called as HQLA. Now what has RBI told? Now RBI has seen that in the recent episodes in some jurisdictions have demonstrated the increased ability of the depositors to quickly withdraw or transfer deposits. When, when these LCR and NSFR was framed, that time access to cash was were not that easy as it was now. That time the bank, they had to visit the branches to take the money. They didn't have UPI then. So net banking facility was not as widespread as it is now. So accessing money was not very easy as it is now. So here what happens is, but in current scenario, accessing money is very easy. You can quickly withdraw or transfer. So it is very important that we consider certain modifications to this LCR. So such emerging risk may require a revisit of certain assumptions under the LCR framework. So maybe uh, now as of now it is required to maintain a hundred percent. So maybe in future uh, the bank may raise it to 200 or 150 percent. So we don't know what assumptions they are going to make. So RBI will make certain modifications to the LCR framework to facilitate better management of liquidity risk by the bank. So this is what is the recent updates or proposals made by the RBI in the MPC meeting. Hello students, welcome to our new initiative called Static Banking Awareness Course. This course is specially prepared to educate the basics of banking in a very easy manner. This is a complete collection of history and evolution of bank over the period. We believe that the banking awareness plays a major role in your preparation. Like for example, recently the Paytm payment bank was in use for n number of reasons. So an aspirant while reading his, this news would have n number of questions within his mind. Like what is this Paytm bank? What is this payment bank? Why was it established? So this starting banking awareness has answers to all those questions. Now, how do we access this course? For that, you will have to download our app, log in our app, and then in our homepage, you will have to click this icon, all courses. After that, you will have to go and click this static banking awareness quiz. In that, you will see various tabs, details part and free. The details part will have all the details about this course like uh, how long it's valid and what are the gist about this course will be available in this details tab. In part tab, you will contain all the topics that we have covered until now and we are planning to also add more topics in this part tab and this will be completed within two months period. Next, in the last free tab, we have provided one course for you to learn and also have an idea about this course. So this course will be available for free so you can go and learn, our, see our content and then have an idea about this course. Along with learning, you can also attend this quiz for strengthening your knowledge. So these are the contents that have, we have been provided, that has been provided under this topic. Now, our RFS Cloud team has put ample amount of time and resources to curate this content. We have taken this content from various verified sources and books. But you may be wondering if it's taken from books, then I can read from the books. But there is a major difference. Here, we update our content on a dynamic basis. Like, for example, there are now 39 DRTs in India. In future, if one more is added and if it becomes 40, then we would update this content on a regular time basis. Apart from that, we also update the contents on exam point of view. So in recently in a banking exam, the questions asked like how many public sector banks are listed on stock exchange, uh, which is the first pay, uh, payment bank that has been listed on stock exchange. So the exam is also becoming competitive and very difficult. So we cover the course in the exam perspective also. So this will really help you in covering your exam portion and also attending it in a very effective manner. 
Apart from that, we have also planned to um, launch a question bank where you have 3000 questions on this topic so that you can recollect it and retain most of the information that you have learned from here. And we have also planned to introduce a new index that will have all the recent RBI major initiatives or major announcements or uh, major news that's been released by the RBI will be available in this index because RBI is recently in use here and then. So that will also be required for your exam perspective. So kindly log in to our app and do check out this static banking awareness course. Thank you. Okay. The next news is general insurance industry grows 12.78% in financial year 24. According to the data released by the General Insurance Council, the general insurance industry has grown by 12.78% in financial year 24. So the entire total premium that has been collected was 2 crore, I mean 2 lakh 89,731 crore and the previous year it was 2 lakh 56,894 crore. Now, so there has been an increase of about 14.24% in the premium of general insurers. But in financial year 23, the increase was 16%. So compared to financial year 24 to 23, the increase was 14%. But 22 to 23, if you see, the increase was 16% in terms of premium amount collected. And if you see the public sector general insurance, they have totally in the total market share, they have around 31.818% when compared to 32.27%. So it has reduced a little bit and the private insurance, ha it has been increased to 53.52%. Now, so the gross premium of 25 non-life insurance companies, it has grown by 14%. So non-life it includes like motor vehicle or no, no, that all comes under non-life insurance. So it is increased by 14% and the standalone health insurance, that is they provide only health insurers, the in insurance, for them it has increased by 26%. And there are other two specialized insurers, that is Agricultural Insurance Co. of India Limited and ECGC. ECGC is Export Credit Guarantee Company Limited. So they provide insurance against the exports. So, um, or so export, export Credit Guarantee Corporation Limited. So, they both have reported a decline of about 29%, that is 11,190 crore in financial year 24. And previous year, it was 15,817 crore. The New India Assurance Company, it has registered 7.4% year on year growth. So, what are the, this, we know that this is a domestic systemically important insurance. Along with it, there are two more, those are LIC and General Insurance Corporation. These three are the systemically important insurance in India. Now, let us see few private sector players like uh, ICC Lombard and Bajaj. They have reported an increase in premium of about 17.84% and 33.49% respectively. And HDFC Ergo they have reported that the premium has increased by 11.61% and United India Insurance Company saw a surge of 12.51%. Now, moving to the next news. SBI and Standard Chartered Bank, they have carried out the first credit default swap trade. Now, State Bank of India and Standard Chartered Bank, they have carried out the credit default swap trade worth rupees 25 crores. This marks the first serious transaction since the Reserve Bank of India has issued revised CDS guidelines in 2022. So, what is CDS? Credit default swap is a credit derivative that offers protection to the buyer against the potential default and also helps manage and transfer credit risk. Now, let us let me explain what CDS is. Now, see. In, uh, suppose a company XYZ, it has invested in the corporate bond issued by this company A. So, so what is CDS? Now, a person A has invested his money in a company called XYZ Limited and in turn, it has issued corporate bond to A. Now, after a few months, this person worries that what if this company defaults? Will I get back my money? So, he 
worries about the risk involved in the corporate bond default. So what he thinks like, why can't I back it using an insurance? So this is what called as credit default swap. So there is another third party involved. Here, what he tells is that I want to insure my corporate bond. He goes to this company C and tells that I want to insure the corporate bond. And then this company, now he, what he does is that he, it sells the credit default swap to this person A. For that, this person pays a premium on a regular basis to this company. So this company, in order to cover the risk, in order to undergo the risk, it collects the premium. Just like any insurance company, they collect a premium on a regular basis. Similarly, this uh, company C, it collects the premium in return for this series. And if anything uncertain, ha uh, uncertain even happens in future, then the risk will be borne by this company C. And there will be no tension for the person A. So, this is what this credit default swap does. So, this trade and the bond that is involved under this, uh, that is underlying in this credit default swap is REC's bond. And this trade, it marks a pivotal movement in credit risk management and underscores the growing sophistication of financial instruments in the Indian market. Now, so as for RBI guidelines, who all can participate in this credit default swap? Resident Indian and non-resident Indian, these are the two retail investors. And the non-retail investors are these many people. These are, these entities are scheduled commercial banks, except small finance bank, payment banks, local area banks and RRB. NBFCs whose net own funds are about 500 crores can participate in the CDS and also export import bank, national NABAD. National Bank of Agriculture and Rural Development, NHB and SIDB can participate in this CDS. Now, what are the underlying instruments for which CDS can be issued? So, the following debt instruments issued in India shall be eligible to be a reference obligation in a CDS contract. These are uh, money market debt instruments, rated INR corporate bonds and dimensions, Unrated INR corporate bonds and debentures issued by special purpose vehicles set by the infrastructure companies. So, uh, so you know there are credit rating agencies. So they provide this rated means this credit rating agencies will provide a rate to this corporate bond. It may vary from A, A++, B. So these are the rate that the credit rating agencies provide on these bonds. And if it, it is unrated, then there is no rate provided by the uh, rating provided by the CRA. So the next is Tata Mutual Fund introduce, introduces six index funds, three are industry first. So on April 8, 2024, it has launched six index funds and the minimum investment is 5000 only during this NFO period that runs from April 8 to April 22. The first one is Tata Nifty Mid Small Healthcare Index Fund. So this Tata index fund has picked all the stocks from the Nifty index fund. So here in case of healthcare, this is a healthcare index and it comprises of 30 selections from the Nifty mid small cap, mostly the top constituents. Next is Tata Nifty 500 multi cap. This is the manufacturing sector and the weightage is 50, 30, 20. So what is this weightage? 50 uh, In this entire index, 50% weightage will be given to large cap, 30 to mid cap and 20 to small cap. Next one is Tata Nifty 500 multi cap 50 30 20 infrastructure team. So similar like previous one but here the team is infrastructure and this will comprise of 75 stocks. The next one is Tata Nifty auto index fund. So this will reflect the behavior and the performance of the automobile uh, sectors which includes the manufacturing of cars, motorcycles, heavy vehicles. Next is Tata Nifty reality index. So this reality index will invest in real estates. So these are for long term capital appreciation and they are open ended scheme that is you can buy and sell them whenever you want. Next is Tata Nifty Financial Services. So it is benchmark against the Nifty Financial Services Index and here it will comprise of maximum of 20 stocks only and one stock will not have a weightage more than 33% and the top 3, stock, top three uh, stocks will not have weightage more than 62%. Next. 
Uh, the chairman of Tata Mutual Fund is Rajiv Sabarwal and is headquartered in Mumbai. The next news is Indian Post Payment Bank has introduced Aadhaar ATM service for convenient cash withdrawals. So, it will enable the customers to avail cash without visiting. You don't have to visit the bank or the branch or even the ATM. So, a doorstep cash withdrawal is uh, you can avail it with the help of a postman or a Gramin Dak Seva. So, this product is called as Aadhaar Enable Payment System. This is uh, this product is uh, was found by NPCI, that is National Payment Corporation of India, introduced this product and it has set a maximum transaction about of 10,000 for a single transaction. This Aadhaar Enable Payment System is a banking service enabling customers to utilize their other identification for accessing associated bank accounts. Just like you can use your debit card or a UPI to access your bank account, similarly the linked Aadhaar can be used as an identification to access your bank accounts. Who can do that? This can be accessible through the designated business correspondent that is BC. They are nothing, they are, they are nothing but verified bank agent. So they will come and provide the micro ATM. This is a terminal. So through this customer can avail these services. Now what are the services that can be availed? Balance inquiry, cash withdrawal, cash deposit, mini statement, these are the services. And only one charge will be applied, that is the doorstep service charges will be applicable. Other than that, no other charges will be applicable. So, let us learn a little bit about NPCI. The NPCI is the initiative of RBI and IBA, that is Indian Bank Association. And it was formed under the Act Payment and Settlement System Act 2007. The main aim to develop is to form a robust payment and settlement infrastructure in India. The UPI, which is famous all over the world, is found by NPI. It is headquartered uh, and the bank, IPB, is headquartered in New Delhi. The MDA and CEO is R. Vishweshwaran and the tagline is Aapka Bank, Aapke Dwara. Next, ADB projected India's GDP growth forecast for 2024 to 7%. So recently, Asian Development Outlook was released. And it has raised India's GDP to 7% from 6.7%. And the main reason was public and private sector investment demand and also gradual improvement in consumer demand. But still, this is lesser than the previous projection that was it projected 7.6% in 2023. For 2025, it projected 7.2% and the inflation projections are 4.6 for 2024 and 4.5 for 2025. And developing economies in Asia and Pacific are forecast to expand 4.9% in 2024 and 2025. And the inflation rate would be 3.2% and 3.3%. And the South Asia will remain the fastest growing sub-region and its growth rate will be 6.3% in 2024 and 6.6% in 2025. So the ADB's uh, growth forecast that is 7%, it is in line with the projections made by the RBI. And the main reason for RBI to do this projection was it, a normal monsoon, a moderately inflationary pressures and sustained momentum in the manufacturing and service sector made RBI project this 7%. And a little bit about a, uh, ADB. The president is Masak Sugu Asakawa. It is headquartered in Manila and it was established in 1966. Okay, the next news is Jammu and Kashmir Bank partners with Paymart, Paymart India to launch virtual ATM festival facility. Sorry, Jammu and Kashmir Bank Limited has signed an MOU with the Paymart India Private Limited to launch an innovative virtual automated teller mission facility. Now, this collaboration aims to introduce cardless cash withdrawals for the bank's customer through local merchants in the neighborhood. Now, what is Paymart? Paymart India Private Limited is a fintech company working on replacing ATMs with a network of merchants. So this will be helpful in areas where there is a remote connection, where there is no ATM. In those kind of areas, this will be very helpful. Now, how does this ATM withdrawal actually happen? Let us see. To withdraw money using this virtual ATM, all you need is a smartphone, a mobile banking application and an internet connection. The first step is that you need to have that bank's app. So in case of Jammu and Kashmir, the app is MPay Delight. So you have to have the MPay Delight app of Jammu and Kashmir. And then you have to initiate a withdrawal request from your bank. 
and then you uh, and make sure that before doing this step you should make sure that the phone number that you have should be linked to your bank account number so remember that your phone number must be registered with the bank to access the mobile banking app next after placing the request you uh, the bank will generate an otp and share it with you through the registered number then you must show this otp to the nearest shop which is empaneled with the sorry which is empaneled with the paymart so it has to be empaneled with the paymart and to th that person you have to show this otp and then you can collect the cash from that shopkeeper or merchant so this is how this virtual atm process works the current limit for virtual atm service is set at 2000 per transaction and rupees 10000 per month this service will be of significant help for people living in or traveling to remote areas where finding an atm can be very difficult but have the shops that accept digital payments so about jnk bank the md and ceo is baldev prakash it's headquartered in srinagar it was established in 1938 and the tagline is serving to empower the next news sebi gets iso iec certification for information security management system now the sebi has received international organization for sanitization or international electro technical commission uh, 270020 uh, 2022 certification for its isms that is information security management system at the primary data center at the disaster recovery uh, site and security operation control and network operations control operations so this is mainly to strengthen the security system of the sebi we know that we live now in a digital era so cyber attacks are frequently happening in nowadays so you have to protect the data the customer's data everything has to be protected and for this purpose sebi has got this certification the certification emphasizes sebi's commitment to ongoing improvement and enhancement of its system and controls to achieve confidentiality integrity and availability of data and operations now about iso iec it is an international standard for isms which defines a specification for an effective isms it offers guideline guidance to establish implement maintain and continuously improve an isms to organizations of all different sizes in different sectors this supports organization to become risk aware and proactively identify and address the weakness the president is sin wa cho and it is headquartered in geneva it was established in 1947 the next news zimbabwe launches new gold bank currency zik which replaces the existing zimbabwe dollars now the reserve bank of zimbabwe has launched this uh, zimbabwe gold it is backed by gold and foreign currencies to replace uh, its local currency we know that zimbabwe has under, undergone a lot of inflation issues the the dollar or the zimbabwe money had depreciated very steeply i also remember seeing news that once even a 100 trillion dollar rupee note you just imagine how much is 100 trillion dollar in us dollar terms so one note of zimbabwe dollar was printed with the value above it written 100 trillion dollar so this was how the rupee had depreciated in zimbabwe so to tackle this issue uh, zimbabwe uh, reserve bank had uh, established or had launched this zimbabwe gold dollar currency so rbi uh, rbz has notified that the banks could convert the current zimbabwe dollar balances into zik with effect from 5th april and the currency and the coins will be in circulation from 30th april the zik is backed by a composite ba basket of foreign currency and precious metals mainly gold the initial exchange rate of zik is set as 13.56 zik per us dollar now about zimbabwe the president is emerson mangwa Harare is the capital and the currency is Zik. Now, Phone Pay has partnered with eSeva and Pokhara to promote the UPI payment. The Bangalore-based fintech company called Phone Pay, it has partnered with eSeva. eSeva is the digital wallet service that is present in Nepal and also the Hotel Association of Nepal which is called as Han Pokhara. So why have they partnered? It is to promote our famous UPI app. So it is to promote our famous UPI payment interface. This all partnership has been done, and on the Nepal payment processor, which is called as Phone Pay Network, this partnership has been done on no, uh, auspicious day for Nepal. It is 19th 
Feva New Year Festival. So this Feva New Year Festival is celebrated with the team uh, tourism, culture and food in three grand stages and what all happens on that day is cultural performance, pop shows and culinary delights. Now, next news is FSIB selected Manoj Mittal as the CMD of Sibbi and Sanjay Shukla named the Managing Director of NHB. Now, FSIB is Financial Services Institutional Bureau. This has replaced Bank Board of Bureau. Now, it has recommended Manoj Mittal for the post of Chairman and Managing Director of SIDBI. He is currently serving, the Manoj Mittal is currently serving as MD and CEO of IFSI that is Industrial Finance Corporation of India. Now, he will replace Siva Subramaniam Raman who has been serving as the C, uh, CMD of SIDBI since April 2021. Similarly, FSIB has also appointed Sanjay Shukla as the MD of the National Housing Bank. It is the apex regulatory body for the overall regulation and uh, licensing of the housing finance companies in India. NHB is also regulated by RBI. He is currently serving as the MD and CEO of Centrum Housing Finance Limited. Now, about FSIB. It has come into effect only in 1st July 2022. Previously, it was the Bank's Board Bureau which would recommend the non-executive directors and the whole time directors. Now, Bank BBB has been replaced by FSIB. The chairman is Banu Pratap Sharma and it is headquartered in Mumbai, Maharashtra. Thank you for watching the session. I hope you had enjoyed it. We are also available in Telegram under the name AffairsCloud underscore official. We also have an Instagram handle. Apart from this, you can contact us directly on 9677333862 regarding any courses that we offer or regarding any payment issues. You can contact on, uh, directly on this number. Thank you.